My friends, let's uh, let's start with uh, with the presentation. Hello, hello, hello. Let's start with the presentation about the defendant. Till now, I find it a very interesting day to have some very interesting presentations of colleagues. You know, things that go through your mind when you're thinking about it, judging breeding dogs. Uh, somebody asked me, do you have Newfoundlands yourself? No. But why do you do a presentation about uh, Newfoundlands? Uh, I'm connected to the breed for many, many years. I'm now a judge for 23 years, and one of the first breeds I was judging was Newfoundlands. And sometimes it's happening when you have somebody in your neighborhood, a good breeder, and you know, I was working for the, for the club a lot, and also I'm in the advisory board of the club for many years. So Newfoundland is, is a breed that's very close to me. And when Dinky asked me, Roni, would you do a presentation? I could also do a presentation about my breed Finnish Pits, but that's a, you know, Braco is a, is a rare breed, but Finnish Pits is even rarer. You see them in Scandinavia, you see them in, in America, but, but in Asian countries you don't see them, you see them in Australia. But, um, and my, my breed at home is Tibetan Terrier. So I have two breeds, Finnish Pits and Tibetan Terrier. Um, talking about the Newfoundland, uh, also the Newfoundland is what you can say it's a world breed. You see them around everywhere. When you're judging in South America, in America, in England, in Europe, Newfoundlands you see everywhere. But also in Newfoundlands we have different types. And, but when you go back to the history of the breed, around 1600, when they found the island of Newfoundland and when the dogs went to England, you already then had two types. You had the Labrador type, so the more elegant type, and you had the Lanceer type, the more heavy type. So when you go back to the origin of the breed, those different types are always connected for a long time with the breed. But before I continue with my presentation, I want to say something else, because I think here are people who are judges or becoming the judges, that's why the seminars here. And the last four days I was judging here at your circuit show, I really loved it and I had some excellent dogs. But in group two, I also had some dogs that I thought, holy moly, what is happening? Because fit for function, uh, soundness, general soundness in mind and in construction comes always first. We talk about breed type, and of course breed type makes a breed Francesco, Claudio, you know, we, we heard about it, but I was watching some of the groups and, and I, I knew that later on I was judging those breeds, but, you know, dogs that couldn't move, dogs with, with you know, infinite fronts, you know, those breeds, different types of, of breeds we have. Situs here in Asia are completely different than our situs. Don't mind, because you can still have a sound animal. And uh, with golden retrievers. If you see the golden retrievers you have here are completely different than we have, but it's still a sound animal. And, and when you have the breed standard, you can still judge it. But please, please, my friends, when you judge dogs, never put up an unsound dog. And of course, the owner or the handler comes with this dog, and you still can be friendly. You can still, still say, oh, it's maybe a lovely pet at home, but please never breed with this dog. Because, you know, this dog is so unsound, it's a crippled dog, it's lame. You know, and, and luckily, Francesco, Claudio, because I was judging and, you know, always when I fly back home after the judging appointment, I want to have a good feeling. And also I make mistakes because, you know, when you're judging, you are, you're making mistakes. But when you evaluate yourself, uh, you must think, okay, I, I left something. And, but luckily, and maybe other judges did the same. But for me, it was really not acceptable that you give a dog the highest graining that is, you know, has a construction like that. And also maybe because I come from a country where the government and where the animal welfare organizations are really watching us, we have what we call fit for function, but we also have breed specific points. And breed specific points means that, for instance, with the English Bulldog, we have to have normal nostrils, not to have any wrinklings. The dog must move normally uh, with the aim is that the tail must not cover it, you know, because normally when the dog is doing his thing, you have to clean everything. So all those things we have to keep in mind that we are breeding and judging sound animals. Um, the Newfoundland, as I just said, um, is a breed that, for instance, in we have a breed standard that's from 1996, 
we still have the same uh, breed standard. And also in England, and I'm lucky that I judged a lot of club shows around the world, also in England, also in the States. Um, but for instance, in England, you can have 100 to 150 um, Newfoundlands, also in Scandinavia, you get these kinds of numbers. Also sometimes in Southern Europe, you have big numbers. Italy is very popular for the Newfoundland. But it's interesting if you uh, study the breed standard, and what I always do when I study a breed, and, and okay, I'm an all-round judge, but I don't know everything, and if I do a breed, I always go through the breed standard and get all the specific breed points in my head. And because does somebody know where the Newfoundland originally was bred for? The Newfoundland, think about this. Where was it originally bred for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically it was a sled dog. A sled dog for, for heavy freight, it's for, for, for heavy cargo. And, you know, it was also a dog that, you know, could, uh, for the fishermen that brings in the nets. You know, think about it, this dog jumps into the water, grabs the nets, bring them to shore, you know, so it's, a, they are, later on I will show you some pictures, they are, they are sitting in a helicopter, you know, when somebody is in the sea and, and it has a problem, they just jump out of the helicopter and go and get somebody back to shore. It's unbelievable. This is what the Newfoundland is doing. And Claudio, what you were saying about get back to her, his original purpose, this is so important because it's a working dog, it's a sled dog. You know, so of course they are beautiful animals when you see them in the ring, but their origin is a working dog. We have them in, uh, in three colors. We have black, we have brown, and we have uh, white black. And we have, of course, another breed which we call the lens here. But the lens here, uh, this color, the British also called lens here, that is the white with uh, black patches. But the lens here type, it's a different breed. It shows more daylight under it, it's lighter, has different head proportions. Uh, but the Newfoundland, we have white and black, brown and black. And black is the most popular color we see most go around. White and black. White and black. Thank you. White and black. No, no. No, no. Sometimes uh, we gave, uh, we did an excellent black and white. Too much black. Yes, this is important. This is important when you see the good, the, the good divide, the divide between white and black. That's very important. Yes. Uh, it's function sled dog for heavy loads and a water dog. And um, I already said, and this is very interesting. It's a lifeguard dog. You know, so also therefore they are still used in a lot of countries. They call it the water work. It's very popular. Um, I think you have the same when you study a breed standard. Uh, sometimes you see things in the breed standard and then you think, hey, when I, when I judge the breed, how do I work with that, you know, how do I evaluate that? And with the Newfoundland, you want to see a massive dog, but it needs to be all well coordinated. And the body is compact. The body is compact. Because normally, the length, let's see how it works. Ooh. Oh, this one, yes. The Newfoundland is also a bit rectangular, but you want to see a compact body. And also here, the, you want to see good length in body, and also the, from the bottom to the breastbone, it's a bit less than from the breastbone to the top of the shoulder. So you want to, yes. And even if you study the breed standard, that sometimes it's also good. Hey, my friend, maestro. Sometimes it's also... Sometimes it's also good to study an old breed standard because in the old breed standard of the Newfoundland it was saying slightly towing in was allowed. And why was that? If you see the front construction of the Newfoundland and you see the, the, the body shape, you know, this roundiness in the body, that it's normal that you cannot have true parallel movements, you know. So really when you study the breed, and of course it's no more in the breed standard, but also uh, Claudio said it and, and Francesco, when you change a breed standard, you don't change the breed. 
You know, when they say, for instance, with the hall with the Great Dane, not directly all the dogs had uh, excellent eye shape. You know, it, it takes a, a time to uh, develop that and to improve that. Well, already said about this that um, it's always good that you know where the dog is and has bred for. It's FCU Group 2, Molossa breeds and mountain type without working trail. About the history, I already told you something about it, where they came from, and that also here, Britain is the country of patronage, and this means that the Brits made the breed standard. Now the breed standard comes from Canada and is held by the FCI. But of originally, the breed standard was made by the Brits. But the Brits, all English breed standards, don't have disqualifying this faults, but the breed standard we are working with now in FCI has faults and disqualification faults, so there is a difference. The basics, when you read the British standard and the uh, FCI standard, it's the same, but the FCI standard is more detailed. Not as detailed as those Italian standards, because they are, you know, you need to have mathematics studied and everything, but it's... Um, and if I may ask, is the Newfoundland, is that a head breed? Is it a head breed or is it not a head breed? What do you think? What, in your opinion, is it a head breed or not? Every dog, for instance, we just saw these beautiful Brecos, and in my opinion it's a head breed, because, and if I'm saying wrong, Claudio, please correct me, but I think when you have a beautiful Braco in shape, but it has an awful head, it's... Oh, now it's getting important. Ooh. You are lucky. Well, now, I was wondering this question I was telling, asking you, do you find that you found that the head breed or not? This is just a question I'm, I'm asking to you. You know, so for me, I, for me, the new founder is a head breed. Because if I really have an ugly head, you know, a head that's, that's too much, I never can award a new founder an excellent. So for me, it's a, it's a head breed. But maybe for you or for you, you, you see it differently, you know, it's, it's, we have this presentation together and we talk and we learn from each other. Um, when we go... I will relate it back to the, uh, to the head. First we do the, the general appearance. We want to see a level top line. We want to see the strong and deep body. Uh, but the head needs to be long enough to permit a good carriage. So we don't want overly long heads and, uh, sorry, necks. And this is then a pitch where I think it goes the wrong direction because you get too much length of neck, you get too much angulation behind. It's still an elegant dog, but this is not how the, in my opinion, how the breed standard has given on the points, you know, to to judge and to to evaluate, for instance, top line, neck, neck length. And also, I think when you really go over this pitch. I'm really interested to see if she will have some forechest, because I think she will have very less forechest. Do you think she's too long? I don't think she's too long. Does somebody think she's too long? The neck is exaggerated. Then you get this, this silhouette, you know, when you go back, for instance, to this. Here you see neck, but neck, that's a sufficient length to... to to, to, to achieve a good carriage of the head. And this dog, I could say, could do with a bit more neck. Yeah? So it's... Uh... And here you see a bit, what do we think of, about this silhouette? A bit too short in body, yes. I agree on that. But when you see the top line also here, you could say, well, maybe it's just a bit over the top, but uh, length of neck. But when I see this, it's really too much. And the other bit, you could say, you know, same as we saw in your presentation, okay, we can accept. And for me, this is a beautiful head and expression. The way it looks at you, 
it's, an, it's very important in every breed, the sex type, male needs to be male, needs to be macho, bitch needs to be feminine, needs to be elegant, but still also here in the breed standard of the Newfoundland it says that also uh, the head of the Newfoundland needs to be feminine but still massive. It still needs to be a strong and powerful head. Here we again have the, the lens here. It's not the lens here, but it's the white with black patches. And here we have another one. This is a, uh, a young bitch with, um, in my opinion, good strong muzzle, good front. But also if I see this dog, and I don't know this dog because the club just gave me the pictures, so I don't know who these dogs are. I just said to the club, I have to do this presentation about the Newfoundland, so send me pictures so I can make the PowerPoint presentation. But in my opinion, this bitch is also a bit compact in silhouette, in overall silhouette. Behavior and temperaments. And this is so nice if you read this. Let's read, read this together. The Newfoundland's expression reflects benevolence, softness, dignified, joyful, and creativity. creativity. He is known for his sterling gentleness and serenity. Well, this is so beautiful to say, you know, when you describe the expression, you want to have this softness, but still you want to have this power as well, you know. So it's really the, the right balance you want to see when you describe the expression of the Newfoundland. And here we have uh, the water work, you know, the water trails I was just uh, telling about, you know, and it's it's... Uh, also, when you go to YouTube and you, you find some films and you see this, it's really amazing how you see those new fish work. It's really, it's yeah, very interesting to watch. And really, the way they go for it, it's really very special to see. Here again, head massive, the head of the bitch follows the same general conformation as the male, but is a bit less massive. And here we have um, a massive head, bitch, a less massive, but still you see the nice roundings, you see the strong muzzle, you see the relatively deeply set, well-shaped eyes, and in the breed standard, the, there is nothing said about the eye shape. There is the eye color is matching with the coat color, but the shape of the eyes, they don't describe, but they are medium-sized, relatively deep set. We want to see a good stop, but we don't want to have a strong stop like the St. Bernard. And this is something we see around, because when you then see the, and later on we see, we'll see a photo of that, you know, when you see the nose point and you follow the line to the tail point, it all needs to be a fluent line, without sharp marks. And these are the two other extremes. Because, for instance, this dog here below, sometimes when you judge in Germany, you, you see those heads. And where does this head remind you of? Labrador. Yes, of a flat coat retriever. You know, it's, the muzzle is too long, it's too wet shaped. Um, and, but this is getting too much for me. When you see the V-shape here, you see the wrinklings, and also here the breed standard is very clear. They want to see the skull without wrinkling, you know, and also the muzzle and also under the eye, they don't want to see loose skin. It needs to be a clean cut head. And two other extremes, and I must say, sometimes when you're judging the breed and, you know, when you're judging the breed yourself as well, you will have the same dilemma because sometimes when you are judging a lovely dog in silhouette with a beautiful top line, excellent body, good <coughs> angulation, you know, but sometimes you say then, well, maybe the head is a bit over the top. And also then, you know, when you are judging in the country where you have critiques, you just put it in your critique, you know, you still can give the dog the highest award. But for me also, um, this head is, well, it, it, it's it's acceptable for me but, you know, when you see the loose skin and when you also see the round skull but they, because they need to have a, a flat skull and when you touch this skull, probably it will be a bit flatter than it is 
here on the photo because it's also the hair. And this is something I don't understand because if you then see them preparing it all for the show, you know, they really are brushing it up. But it needs to be flat, so they, they do something that goes against the Greek standard. And here again, you see the other side that you find around the world when you're judging. And also the one dog that we were, were judging here, the, the one you found that was here, had also a head that went on to this direction. And here you see the brown head, then in my opinion you see a nice head, you see a strong muzzle, you see a correct stop, well placed, relatively deeply set eyes. And what's also important is, oops, sorry. What's also important is that the, the ears, they are following the head profile. So really when you see a new feet, the ears must go into the profile of the head. So, you know, when you touch and also when you want to check the length of the ears, you go to the, the, the corner point here, and then you know that uh, the, the ears are not too big, because sometimes you see really very heavy uh, ears. And that also spoils the expression. Again, two, two of those dogs that, and this is nice because they just sent me uh, this file with all those photos and I just went through it. And also here you can say, well, maybe this is on the heavier side, but still acceptable. But I just want to, to present it to you that you can see, and if maybe you're not well known with the, with the breed, that those types you find around. And this is also, this is an Italian dog. This is an Italian dog, an Italian champion. A brown one. A bitch. A bitch with a strong head, but still a very feminine expression. Here you can say that the, um, the ears are maybe a bit on the prominent side, but the overall profile of the head is correct. And here again you see the head that you say, well, this is too much like flat coat, like a Labrador Retriever. You know, no filling under the eyes and too wet shaped in the head. And this photo we saw before, and for, for me, and I know this, those kinds of dogs are winning, uh, I was judging uh, new fees at the European show and they had a lot of those dogs and they nearly killed me. It was a lot of those overtime dogs and I called it, uh, yeah, nearly St. Bernard's head, you know, too heavy, uh, too much for me. And the people know that I don't like it. Maybe it's the old school where I come from, but you know, it's still, it's, it's uh, and also when you follow the breed standards, we don't want these kinds of heads. And here again you see you have power, you have strength, but it's still a clean, strong head. Yeah, and this is what we want. Um, well, we, I talked about all those elements here, what's in the in the breed standard about the facial region. This dog we saw also before, but now from another angle. And What's nice on this photo, you see the big nose, you know, you see it, and, and also, but also this, this muzzle and this V-shaped for me, and also look at the huge ears, this, heart, this head for me could do uh, with more quality, with more style, with more, yeah, points being asked for in the green standard. And this is really a dog that you can see when you see the, also the length of the muzzle is relatively short and also the, the, the wrinkles you see and also very often you see the open eyes, the eyelids are not well set and this is a British champion yeah sorry yeah is that is the model too short for you in your opinion yes yes yeah. But also what, what really disturbs me here is, 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 is the, the wrinkling. You know, when you look this dog in another color, it easily could be a Saint Bernard, you know, and not a new thing. You know, and, and, and the breed standard, of course you can say, yeah, well, it's fashion. You know, but still the breed standard is very clear. 
you know, because why would we also have Greek standards describing how we have to judge the dogs and how we have to judge heads? Do you find that excess green can come from the shorter muzzles? Uh, that's a good question. Here you see that it, that it comes with, and, and but in general, do you find the more wrinkled ones have a sort of a normally they do, yes. Yeah. Oh, here again, E is relatively small, triangular, with round tip, but I already talked about it. Now, the neck we also discussed already. And here is the other. It's also nice to find this kind of photos, you know, because when you see this photo, a dog with no neck, too compact, and, you know, this is also what we, what we see around, you know, and for me this is good. But it's nice to show not only the, bad, the good dogs, but also the dogs that you can find when you're judging the breed. This is also an Italian bitch. I must say that Italy and also Spain are producing nice, nice dogs. This is a bitch. Maybe if you see this bitch, you can say that she, because the, the underline needs to be nearly horizontal, nearly horizontal. You know, you don't want to have a strong tuck up. Uh, maybe this bitch has a bit too much tuck up, but in head, in front, in overall silhouette and type, she's very nice. Well, here about the body, the points we already discussed, about the level top line, it's, it's so important. Today we, we talked also about, in the, in the other breeds, about the top line, about the silhouette, um, about the croup, but really when you see the construction of the Newfoundland, and when you see the silhouette, it's quite a normal dog. You know, it's, it's, it, those points in the breed standard don't make it very special. This is also, a Dutch and international champion, but we saw this dog before. And here you see also a dog, and this is what, we, what I talked about in my introduction when I started the presentation. Look at this front, such a very narrow front, you know. Um, it, it's, this is no bone, no substance. You know, it's, it, it's a new fee, but it's, it's, it's the other side. It's, 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 this is not what we want. We want to have a massive, we want to have a powerful dog, but really when we are judging, and in a lot of countries in Europe, also in Switzerland, for instance, you find those type of dogs. We have them in Australia. You have them as well? Okay. So it's... it's uh, and also with this, the, the standard is a blueprint that helps you, because this is something we don't want. Again, here, far too, too small, no bone, no substance, too compact. Yes, you see? <laughs> <laughs> totally the wrong color, too much uh, patches in the white. We want to have a, 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 as clean cut as possible. And of course, when you have a lovely animal and you have some spotting in the white, you know, you accept that, you accept that, no problem with that. What also is important when it goes to the to the feet, you know, we want to have this this compact, strong feet, but also the webbing in the toe, in the toes is such a special feature of the breed. Just check it, you know, when you go over the dogs, and even when you judge in a country where they have critiques and you say something about it, you know, you you, you score points because the the exhibitors know, hey, he studied the breed, he knows what he, he's talking about. And of course, when you go back to the basics of the breed. It's a very special element they may need to have for their swimming uh, points. Well, the best way to pick it up is to it up. Yeah, just, you know, I do it like, I just do it how, as I do it. You go, you go over the dog, just follow the feet, and you, you just lift it, and you, you know, you don't have to do all the feet. If you do one, you know, it's the same when you, that's the way you do it, you know, but it's just the feature you have to do when you judge the feet. Well, four quarters, that, that's quite general in, in, as it is for, for a lot of breeds. Same with hind quarters. The tail, that's important. It's like a rudder, you know, and it, it's uh, also when the dog is doing his work, it's important. 
and also when the dog is on the move you know it's nice when you see the tail following the body line just a little bit higher you know but you don't want to see the tail between the legs you know you want also temperament wise it's that's important that you know the you see a good tail carriage the newfoundland moves with good reach of four legs and strong drive of high quarters give the impression of effortless power a slight roll on the back is natural as the speed increases the dog tends to single track with the top line remaining level and also here where we just discussed at the beginning you know when you see the body shape of the newfoundland really true parallel movements you nearly never see you know but then also i think really that's a point we have to watch is good uh, reach and drive good power at the rear because a lot of newfies don't have power in their back legs you know so this is something yes yeah but also here the breed standard really helps you because they need to have it and also when you want to help the breeders or you want to help the exhibitors just you know because they are there they are there you have sometimes when you judge you think wow look at the power look at the extension the, the new fee has so the qualities are there but it's a weak point in the breed well the water resistant coat a double coat we, we just talked this morning about the lasa uh, about the the amount of work you have to do to prepare a coat but also a new fee it's really a lot of work to make to, to really to work on it to give it in good condition well the colors we talked about black white and black and brown and here we have again the three colors the black the brown and the white and black the size well also here and talked about it also in the presentation of, of, of francesco i think a good dog doesn't have a size you know when you see a well-balanced dog and it's maybe a bit up to size okay it's a bit up to size but still a nice well-balanced dog you know so i never measure uh, new fees and uh, also when it goes for the weight yeah also here it needs to be a powerful dog so there needs to be you know good substance and uh, that gives some kilos. When you size-wise, I mean, you analyze too big, too small, what's the general breed Well, I think with Newfie, I rather, when the dog is getting too small, too fine, I'm penalizing that much more than when I have a beautiful sound dog which is a bit, which is a bit up to size. Okay, it's a bit up to size, but still it's a sound and typey dog. You know it's no problem for me but when it's going the other direction because when you then again follow the degree standard you lose track because you know you, you create a different animal well this is so by thinking when you read those thoughts okay when i see those things you know the people that made the breed standard didn't made it for nothing you know they they, they made it to give you something okay think about those points when you see it in a breed and when it's a fault, uh, but it's quite a long list, you know, but you can read it for yourself. But also here they pointed out, for instance, this narrow head, this snipe or long muzzle. When you really go through those points, you think, yes. Also what, what I discussed with you today with the presentation, all those points uh, came through. And again, uh, those points are not making a Newfoundland more typical. Disqualification faults. This is of course important. Aggressively, aggressive and overly shy, that's for all breeds. Any dog clearly showing physical and behavioral abnormalities shall be disqualified. That's also uh, for all breeds. But overshot and undershot by the wry mouth. Short flat coat, you know, again, you know, when it goes to the other side, it's a disqualification. Markings of any other color than white or black or brown dogs. And any other color than black or white, the black or brown and of course males should have had normally uh, normal testicles fully this went into the scrotum it's, uh, but also this is for all breeds this is an american dog and also it's sometimes people say yes but when you go to america the newfoundlanders they are over the top they have sloping top lines they are over regulated and too short but i must say be careful what you say because i, I judge the breed in different parts in the states 
and I've judged this kind of dogs, but I also judge excellent dogs. So it's it's too radical to say in the States they have this overtype Yuffie no, but because also I judge in South America and there I also judge some lovely Newfoundlands. So excellent dogs you find everywhere, bad dogs you find everywhere as well. So it's it's not good to generalize. But this is this is for me a dog that I say that goes also to for me too extreme, too extreme in head, too too extreme in neck, in angulation. And, um, and if, again, then go back to the breed standard, and you see that this dog is not fitting into the breed standard. Well, this is what it's all about. Love about dogs, love about the children working with the dogs. Questions? About the black and white dog. Yes, if you find one, maximum. Also here, Claudio, it, it's, it's when you see the dog, and when it's really when you see a dog and you think, mm, I see it, and it really doesn't uh, affect me in, 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 in judging the dog, I don't do, because I'm not looking for faults. You know, when I'm judging dogs, I try to find the qualities in the animal that's in front of me. Yes, it's, it's written in the fault, but it's, you know, there are also, it's, it's color, you know, it's, 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 there is so much to ask for in the breed, and when you have a beautiful animal and it has a bit of a small miss mark, it's for me not a, a point that. No. I think that we should think about also to evaluate faults. So we should think a little bit uh, with the breeder's mentality. So uh, for me, I agree with him. If the color is not, you can correct easily. Uh, so for me, why should you penalize your strong? But maybe some other fault that you need really hard work to correct. In that case, I could penalize more. So, but this, this, yeah. exactly. Yes. You know, when you then, of course, it's mentioned as a fault, but when you go through the breed standards, you know, it's the function, it's the breed, the, the points where they originally bred for. You know, those are very important and. You have, if you have an unsound dog, then you really have to uh, penalize it strongly. Thank you. This is my flight. Okay, thank you. Have a safe flight. See you tonight, Carla. Thank you. <coughs> Are you going? Yes. Okay. Bye bye. <coughs> safe flight, eh? My friends, do you have more questions about... Yes. Um, you said this is a head breed, but if you go back to function, the rest of the dog, to me, would be more important, like the structure uh, and length and all that. So why, in your opinion, do you say the head is so important? Well, Kobe, it, it, I said it, you know, I think you, as a judge, you decide yourself, you know, because also if you look at the breed standard, uh, more than two A4s are describing the head. In detail, you know, in detail. And I see uh, when I'm judging, uh, for instance, when I did the first specialty in the States, um, I was not happy because there were a lot of dogs who were on on the with the hats, with the heavy hats, with the wrinkling that that I don't like. And I I noticed when I was judging, you know, that that was not giving me the right feeling. When when I can find some dogs that have the the, the good hat, strong hat, and maybe small details and had no problem. But for me, when I have such a wrinkled head, I cannot award this dog excellent. Because maybe it comes from the school where I started from, but it's, it's as it is. Just for me, it's a head breed. Well, but why, why do you think, in your opinion, the head was so important in the function of the dog? No, it's, it's, you're completely right in the function. It's, um, it has no, uh, no elements for that. You know, it's, it's, it, for instance, also, the, the breed standard is not the, the breed standard is mentioning this loose skin, the, meat, the breed standard is mentioning this excessive rimpling, so they put it in the breed standard because they saw that it was going that direction, but also you want to have a soft mount, this means because he's doing his work, so it, there needs to be some loose lips, because with a loose lip you get a soft mount, you know, so you don't want to have the lips really tight. Yes. Yeah. 
Of course, that's why you want to have a strong muscle with, with, with not loose lips, but, but with lips with those corner markings. In, they are important, you know, to, to have grip and to have this soft mouth to, to do the work again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for your attention.